fine time here at WCTV, Wilmington Community Television. Tonight is September 25th. We are live, and it is September 25th, and we are live on Talk to WCTV. My name is Karen Kirk. I'm the general manager of Wilmington Community Television. We have a small crew, but effective crew tonight. We have Jay Velatka right here. We have Stephen Knight running audio, so if for some reason my mouth is moving but you can't hear, that's Stephen's job. And tonight is the premiere work of Carrie Coletti, who is directing tonight. The reason we're having such a fine time and just such a daffy time is uh, we are enjoying the uh, memories of WCTV week, which occurred last week from September 16th through September 20th. We did a lot of work for WCTV week, and it was a very successful week. We're really happy with the results. And I was looking over some tapes from, from last week, and uh, everything went flawlessly, everything went real smoothly. So it, it gives me a good feeling. So uh, that's why we're having such a good time here. We have a couple people uh, in the control room. We have Jay Velatka running camera. And uh, we won't be taking any live telephone calls tonight, but we are live tonight, and that's September 25th. Uh, tonight, what I want to talk about is WCTV Week. For those of you who don't know what WCTV Week, I'm going to talk a little bit about what the plans were for WCTV Week, what we did, and then we have a special tape that I produced as a memory of what happened last week. WCTV Week is a local programming week highlighting and celebrating Wilmington Community Television. Now there is a national local programming week designed by the National Federation of Local Cable Programmers. Now this national week is for all the access facilities in the United States of course, except for WCTV, because we're just that much more special than all the other access facilities in the United States. So we had our local programming week a month early. The reason that we had it a month early was because um, someone suggested that it would be a great time because kids are getting back to school, the teachers are getting back to school, people are getting back into the mind frame of really volunteering and helping out. So we thought that um, the fall would be an excellent time to start up a local programming week. So WCTV Week was our addition to the local programming week, celebrating access, celebrating the cable studio, and celebrating its members. We designed it um, back in the spring of 1991 and we divided each night into five different topics highlighting a special group or organization in Wilmington. The first night was government night. And the reason we chose the first night to be government night is that we knew we were getting channel 56 on the air. We needed some special equipment, we needed some special training, um, but we did get channel 56 on the air. Now, you're saying, what's this Channel 56 business? I thought you were just Channel 30. We have three channels, Channel 30, 52, and 56. Now, some of you on Monday who usually turn on Channel 30 to watch the Selectman meeting were a little confused, to say the least, because you expected to see the Selectman on 30. The Selectman is a government program and we have put it on channel 56, which is the government channel. So anything government related, issues related, civic related, you'll find that on channel 56. Anything educational, um, informational, um, anything relating to the schools, for example, the school committee meeting, that can be seen on channel 52. Now, Anything that doesn't fall under those two uh, guidelines, government or education, would fall under public access. Talk to WCTV is a public access television show. 
public access means that members of Wilmington can come down and have access to the equipment. And that is what we see here. We have three members of the community and they're producing this television show. So this would be a public access program. So the, I'm going to have to rely a lot on the viewership to decide ahead of time what type of, of heading their program will fall under. Are you looking for the town meeting? Chances are you'll find it on 56. Are you looking for a school committee meeting? That will only be seen on channel 52. No longer will all the programs be seen on just channel 30. Now to talk a little bit more about WCTV week, Monday night was government night. What we first did, with the help of Selectman Mark Haldane and Town Manager Michael Kyra, is we turned on the switch for Channel 56. Susan Kufagasos, the president of WCTV, cut the ribbon, uh, officially opening this PEG system, a public access, educational access, and governmental access system. Susan officially cut the ribbon, Selectman Mark Haldane read a very beautiful proclamation officially proclaiming September 16th through 20th WCTV week. A proclamation written and signed by Selectman Chairperson Daniel Ballou. Uh, then at the same time as Mrs. Kufagasos cut the ribbon, Town Manager Michael Kyra threw the switch on the modulator. Now a modulator is really the heart and soul of a channel. When it's turned off, you're going to get snow, static. When it's switched on, you can see channel 56. And so Michael Kyra officially turned on channel 56 and we were very pleased with the outcome. Monday night as part of the governmental access celebration, we had an 8 o'clock live show at 8 o'clock with Michael Kyra and Mark Haldane. And they received six telephone calls during this half hour program and the entire program was produced and run by Access Volunteers. Tuesday night was education night. We had a round table discussion discussing using video in the classroom and programming chairperson Phil Nowlin of WCTV led this discussion with some teachers, administrators, uh, PAC members and school committee representative. At 8 o'clock live, I hosted a show with five other PAC members, with five PAC members, to discuss how they used video in getting a message across from the parents' advisory councils. Wednesday night, uh, membership chairperson Sandra Curtin of WCTV made some phone calls to people who haven't been to WCTV in a while and their membership had expired. What she tried to do was give people a phone call and say that we're still here, we're still ha interested to having them come down, and uh, she did an excellent job at that. Wednesday night on 8 o'clock live, we had a program with different service organization representatives and they all spoke about their organization, their membership, drives, and also, more importantly, how they use WCTV in the past and how they're going to use WCTV in the future. It was a very in informative show so that other people could see some representatives from different service organizations. We had a representative from the Lions Club, the Kiwanis Club, the Rotary Club, AIM, the Community Fund, and the Girl Scouts. So it was, it was a good variety of people. On Thursday night, it was a very exhausting week. <laughs> On Thursday night, uh, Jim Lyon of WCTV helped videotape the free child identification tapings. Eleven children turned out and we videotaped them with their parents' voice with the name, address, telephone number, and social security number. That tape will not be seen on WCTV, but it will be stored at the police department in case of emergency. Thursday night, with the help of Robert Shelley and Daniel Stewart, we had a program highlighting police and fire safety for the young viewers at home. 
they talked about bike safety, bus safety, um, using matches and the like. Uh, it was a very informative show again. However, we didn't get that many phone calls, I think um, because it was premiere week on the networks, even though WCTV week was quite a premiere for, for us. Finally, on Friday night, Friday night was the culmination of the entire week. Friday night was pro Access Producer Recognition Night. We had a live telecast in here with the members sitting in here, sitting in the control room, and sitting in our teaching room in the back. We had a full house, and we gave some speeches, both um, President Susan Kufagasos and myself. We gave out certificates and little WCTV cups, and then after the live telecast, then we had a nice reception with food and a large cake, a very large cake, and uh, punch and coffee. It was a very nice evening. It went from uh, 7 to around 9.15 was when the last people left. And uh, it, was, it was a real good feeling to be able to celebrate access on this final night. We were building and building and building and building, and then on the final night, we celebrated the members. And those are the people who are the most important to WCTV, are the members. They're the ones who produce the programs. Some of you at home might think that I have an en entire staff who goes out and produces the programming. You produce the programming. Uh, Stephen Knight, writing audio, produces the programming. Carrie Coletti, Jay Valatka. They all produce the programs. Uh, if you have a question about our programming or a complaint, uh, please let us know because we would like to address those problems and questions. Again, we are live tonight. This is Talk to WCTV. We won't be taking any live telephone calls, uh, but we do appreciate any input that you might have. Uh, a way to give us input is a telephone call. I'm here from 10 to 6. Uh, or, or a letter. You might have a question or a comment that you may want to put in the form of a letter. And we will address your concern or question as soon as we possibly can. We're here for you. Uh, the members are here to give the viewers at home quality programming. Uh, at this time, I would like to show you our culminating tape that encompasses the entire week of WCTV week. Uh, it starts with um, Monday right through Friday's Access uh, Recognition Night. So uh, we'll take a look at that tape now. It's a particular pleasure to welcome and to thank our distinguished guests, Selectman Mark Haldane and Town Manager Michael Kyra for being here this evening to help us launch Channel 56, Wilmington's Government Access Channel. Channel 56 joins Channel 30, Wilmington's Public Access Station, and Channel 52, Wilmington's Educational Access Station, in bringing a full range of local programming to Wilmington. It is WCTV's sincere hope that the people of Wilmington will use these channels to their fullest potential. I would also like to thank General Manager Karen Kirk for doing a superb job in not only launching Channel 56, but helping to educate and entice the people of Wilmington to utilizing these stations. Whereas local cable programming brings Wilmington's political, educational, cultural, sports, and special events to television, and whereas local cable programming is produced in conjunction with a variety of community groups, including the Parents' Advisory Councils, Recreation Department, School Committee, and Wilmington Service Organizations, and whereas an average of 15 hours of original local programming are cable cast each week, and whereas over 85% of the citizens of Wilmington receive WCTV's three access channels, and whereas the members of WCTV are to be commended for their tireless efforts and keep, to keep local citizens in Wilmington informed, enlightened, and entertained. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Daniel Ballou, Chairman of the Wilmington Board of Selectmen, do hereby proclaim September 16th through 20th, 1991, WCTV Week, 
On behalf of Chairman Dan Ballou and the entire Board of Selectmen, congratulations to WCTV-TV on their accomplishments. Thank you. Thank you. Without further ado, we will launch Channel 56. And as Michael Kyra cut the ribbon, Channel 56 was officially on the air. Later that same evening, we presented the first of many 8 o'clock live programs. Tonight's program kind of was Government TV Night, and, the, uh, and this co-starred Mark Haldane, Kirk, representing the, the Wilmington Board of Selectmen, for, uh, Wilmington, and, and Town Manager Dumbo. Michael Kyra. We certainly are, Mike. Uh, WCTV has provided a great service to the town of Wilmington. And uh, if what you're saying is true, and I believe it is, that uh, they're doing an outstanding job of these fields, could... Uh, you have someone check that this week to see if the fields are being damaged because of the practice there, and if so, then take the right action. Well, let me just say this to you, that we, we have been out there, and it's just like beauty. It's in the eyes of the beholder. And so uh, one person's uh, sense that the field is being damaged is another person's sense that it isn't. But it is something that we're looking at, and I, I appreciate you bringing it to uh, up to the attention of all the residents where we, you know, it's very important that we provide the best possible facilities for all the youngsters and we, uh, we certainly don't want to uh, present any of them with a situation that is uh, second best. And it just seems like you hear it at one crossing, you don't even hear Both it. Both the uh, town, like town manager and Selectman Haldane expressed that they oh, enjoy I, the call-in format, being able to speak really to the residents it of the town uh, really about to the issues that they're most concerned. Town uh, I, we at WCTV uh, hope to continue call-in uh, programs Kilmarnock such as the one uh, that they Lane, had during 8 o'clock uh, live Salem during WCTV Street, week. Uh, there are a number of places in which we receive a lot of complaints about train whistles. And yes, I've heard it only like at Woburn Street and Kilmonic. I don't even hear it at Concord Street. Jane Kirk, I'm the general Tuesday, manager Tuesday, September 17th, television. was Education Live Night during WCTV Week. Can be seen each and every Firstly, evening this from week 7 to 8, we week. had a roundtable discussion with it many teachers 17th. and administrators to talk about using calls video in education. The number is then on 8 o'clock live, I hosted Tonight's five topic members falls under of the, general the PAC, heading of education the Parents night. Advisory Council. Education night. Jolene Meixler and Sharon Wynn represented so show the Wildwood the School and the Parents Advisory TV. Council. And one of the Susan Ellis represented uh, the for, uh, Wilmington the High School PAC, PAC as she is and the new am. president. <laughs> and Cheryl Sodaquist and Sandra Curtin um, she had some are past Cheryl members of the PAC the and truly involved in helping get video and education as one. And um, subsequently, we did do a lot of programming last year. We usually come as a duo on mm -hmm. the show. Mm -hmm. It was really a well done production. And the people on the panel were all professionals dealing with either teenagers or teenagers in alcohol or alcohol. So they had a lot of information to share. We followed that program up with a last the last program that we did was a video in which we asked the students to bring in uh, pictures of themselves from zero up. And um, we, we compiled a whole video to, of their pictures and had a message at the beginning and a message at the end um, saying that they were to take care of themselves, keep the values in, of their family in mind, etc. And that was very well received and that was shown only to the seniors um, in a special assembly, and then we had it broadcast over WCTV. Our third night of WCTV week was September 18th. From 6 to 7, chairperson of the WCTV membership committee, Sandra Curtin, contacted past members of WCTV to see if they'd like to get renewed with their involvement at WCTV. Eight O'Clock Live featured service organization representatives, which gave them the opportunity for their membership drive, as well as a way to tell Wilmington viewers how they use WCTV in the past and how they plan to use WCTV in the future with their future activities. I think that Wilmington as a community is 
uh, really fortunate to have a number of really active service and fraternal organizations, uh, certainly the people that are represented here tonight. Uh, everybody does their thing for the specific people or specific organizations, and it really, it's a dynamic community. And, you know, I think something like the 4th of July really demonstrates a, a sense of small town togetherness, which you really don't find. And certainly all the organizations uh, uh, are, are really vital and, uh, you know, and it's, it's good to compete on a friendly nature with everybody. Um, the Lions have a, a specific fundraisers. We have a very busy agenda every year, uh, and we're always looking for help. Um, the fourth night of WCTV Week was Child Safety Night. We felt this was very important because a lot of our programming is geared toward the young viewer. From 7 to 8, we had child identification tapings, which were free and open to all Wilmington residents. The tape is stored at the police department. 8 o'clock live featured police safety officer Robert Shelley and fire safety officer Daniel Stewart. If you don't have a number on your home, ladies and gentlemen, would you put one on your home? It's very important for an emergency or if you need the police right away to identify your area, please get a number on your home. Uh, it would help us out a lot. Uh, another program that uh, I do, uh, each year I give away $1,000 worth of bicycles in the uh, elementary schools in K-5. to And uh, the last couple of years I uh, had some help. The Wilmington Police Association sponsored it, and then the, one, the Rotary Club sponsored it last year, and again this year the Wilmington Police Association sponsored it. The way I do it is I go into the schools and I, I run a bike safety program. I bring a film in, and uh, we take all the children, whether they're sick that day or not, and put their name in a box from K to 3. And, uh, excuse me, K1 and 2. It doesn't fit into those two September categories. 20th, 1991, access, was Access Producer Recognition Night. Uh, this was the culmination of WCTV Week, we had and it was a chance to applaud all of the members who worked so hard throughout the year to bring for your the best possible programming to, to WCTV's three access channels, 30, 52, and 56. Teaching Tom how to edit and he produced a, an excellent 10-minute video about the Barrows Auditorium. And I think we spent five hours putting this, yeah, yeah, if not six hours, putting this editing project together. And um, I've been holding it up for people to emulate because it was such an excellent editing job uh, and it was his first time. So he's an excellent guy and uh, he's been helping with soccer um, so he hasn't been around, but I'd like to thank him and if he could come up. Much organization and volunteerism helped make WCTV Week a success. I'd like to thank those volunteers who helped out during WCTV Week. Jim Lyon, Steve Knight, Brenda Suprenant, Andrea Fotopoulos, Anne-Marie Meeker, Jay Velatka, Carrie Coletti, Sandra Curtin, Laura Wynn, Adam Meixler, Stella Courtney, and Fred Crispo. Hello, we're back. We hope you enjoyed that. This is Talk to WCTV. We are live. And we're talking about WCTV Week, which occurred last week, September 16th through 20th. We enjoyed it a lot. We hope you enjoyed a look back at WCTV Week. And we also hope that you learn a lot about WCTV through Talk to WCTV and through a lot of the press releases that I put in the newspaper. If there's anything I do want you to, to notice is that um, WCTV is using its three channels and delineating it into 30, 52, and 56. Again, 30 is public access, 52 is educational access, and 56 is governmental access. Now, for those of you who are regular viewers who tune in regular, regularly to our community bulletin board, you'll notice that our program schedule is a little multicolored these days. You'll notice at the bottom of the screen of, of the program schedule, the number 30 is in white, 
the number 52 is in yellow and the number 56 is in purple. What that means is that on the program schedule, any program that's written in white is public access, and that's on channel 30. Any program that is written in yellow is going to be seen on 52, and any program written in purple will be seen on 56. It's going to take a long time to re-educate the public uh, about these changes, but I think that it's worth it, and I think that you'll enjoy being able to turn to a channel knowing what it's about. You know that Channel 56 is governmental, so if you know that you enjoy government programming, you'll see that on 56. There's a lot of changes going on, uh, and I hope that you'll stay with us in the next few months as we go through these changes. Talk to WCTV is made possible by a grant by AAA Cartel Cleaning Company. On behalf of the entire group here, we have Stephen Knight on audio, Carrie Coletti premiering his skills, directing, and Jay Velatka running camera. On behalf of all of us, I'd like to say thank you for watching Talk to WCTV, and have a nice evening.